Whoa, well that's unexpected and new. Hey folks, welcome back to another video here at the channel. I'm Aaron, your host, here for another blade review and a blade review on a locking mechanism that I've never used or tested out before. I'm always looking at newness and I love innovation and you know design features that are outside the norm. I always like to see what is being produced and what comes out of people's minds and where they may take it and where it may become you know a staple or a standard. And what we're looking at today is the Cold Steel AD15 Lite with the Scorpion locking mechanism. This is a, a locking mechanism that's very unique. It kind of works like a pivot. You could think of like an axis you know, lock, but also like a lock back design where you have this big bar back here with a pillar construction and then a pivot and you pull up and that disengages it and then the blade swings in and that keeps it locked into place there. So it's a very unique design. I know Andrew Demko, uh, I believe I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, is the original you know, brainchild, came up with this locking mechanism on his own design and then uh, Cold Steel has um, adopted it with his help into this model, both the light and the um, S35VN version that originally dropped, I believe a year or two ago. So super cool, really looking forward to diving into this heavy duty folder, this unique design, and showing you guys pros, cons, competitive options. What else does Cold Steel offer? And say like a Bush Ranger, Voyager, we're gonna talk all that today, and whether or not the Scorpion lock on the AD15 Lite is worth pursuing, or if it's better, to stay with tried and true designs like the triad locking mechanism. All right, folks, so right out of the gate, let's go ahead and talk about the deployment and this Scorpion locking mechanism. What is it offering that's different from any other real design out on the market? Now, right out of the gate, the deployment is great with these ambidextrous thumb studs that we got going on right here, honeycombed, very well done, far away from the body, so they're easily to be engaged. You could remove them for sharpening needs or other things like that if you needed to, but they are completely um, equal on either side. So a lefty could easily do that just as easily as a righty. And I'm trying to do this, you know, not being someone who's left-handed, but uh, a lefty could manipulate this knife, no problem. So that's a big plus right out of the gate. Then it's gonna be running on bronze bushings that are buttery smooth, which is really good. I mean, you can just see that once we get it over the, you know, inertia point, then it just falls right into place there. Good detent. You can, with a lot of force, whip it open, but the detent is good. Perfectly centered straight down the middle there. And so now on to the Scorpion lock itself. We have this aluminum bar right here that has a stop bar pin right up here, as you can see. Very big, very robust. Really like that a lot. So it's gonna drop right into this big notch right there. So it's very deep. It's a very thick, robust bar, boom locks you into place now i don't maybe the a micron of side to side and a micron up and down but i mean that's a very stable very rigid locking mechanism right there so in that regard um i really see no issues and the way it's designed the harder you hold the knife the more down force you're actually putting onto that lock bar um, back here that the the stop pin or you know that it has now if you are releasing it that releases it pulls that bar right there out of that notch and then it is able to come down so you have to do a reverse motion to you gripping the knife in order to disengage it so it's very robust but also very a, a very solid feel in your hand which is something that you want in a heavy duty duty folder like this and what we know from cold steel in general now this back pivot right here is a screw you can completely take this apart if you want to and inside the body back here is a spring and that is what is giving the resistance and keeping the bar pressed down that you then have to overcome that spring and it's a very big thick robust spring that's then what again releases it and allows it to fall into place there so in the way that it's designed it's a very smooth action you can just kick that and pull back you just kind of kind of get a, a little bit of a learning curve just for that pinching motion but once you get it i mean you can whip it open and close almost like a an axis lock kind of design in that way uh, and again giving you just very good robust feel uh, and very very solid lockup on a very smooth deploying knife for how big and large the overall design is. Whoo! That sun is reflecting off the snow. So if I'm 
look like I'm squinting a little bit. It's because I'm trying to fight that snow. I might actually have to count sunglasses here in a second. But let's go ahead and hit this blade, the business end of the tool. We got from handle to tip, three and a half inches. Big, wide, broad, beefy blade. That's what you're buying. If you get one of these tools, expect big, thick, robust, heavy duty, hard work, hard use knife. Now, the positive that it's going to be very tough and durable and reliable, um, and it will slice and cut, absolutely. But it's just a thick, beefy blade. So it's not going to be as light and precise and um, slicey as, say, like a full flat grind. Even the, like the Cold Steel Voyager is going to have a thinner stock and a full flat grind. It's just going to slice a little bit better. You're not going to really notice it too much, but that's not necessarily the first thought with this. This is like overbuilt, bomb proof b17 vibe that you're getting on the blade now we have a high saber grind that goes up about three quarters of the way uh, great edge geometry zero complaints there good drop with that nice swedge that kind of cuts in and then flares out again near the tip giving you a very robust strong tip that will still pierce a lot of packaging and stuff like that but uh was very tough and durable had no problems with it piercing and doing my lateral you know work that i would do with a heavy duty pocket knife it performed very well in that capacity now as i said it is thick uh here by the thumb studs you're looking at 0 0.15 so um we're almost looking at basically 5 30 seconds of an inch thick just about uh and more robust than say the cold steel recon one which is going to be 0 0.14 um, I believe the Voyager is an eighth of an inch thick on the uh, large. Uh, it is the same thickness as the uh, Bush Ranger that we'll look about and competitive options in a little bit. So it is definitely on the beefier, thicker, more robust end of tools to be sure. And so it's going to perform that way. I've cut everything that I put up against it, basically, which I was very happy with. And really the only aspect that I wasn't super stoked on was just carving, just because it is that thick saber grind. Uh, the edge geometry is good and you can absolutely remove wood and that type of stuff, but it basically can, is the same thickness and, you know, often edge geometry of a lot of my fixed blades. So it's better just to go with a fixed blade. It's not going to add to the sliciness compared to, say, your bushcraft knife or, you know, hunting knife that you have. Those are going to perform the same or, or even better depending on edge geometry and even handle ergonomics because we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, on how the Scorpion Lock handles with ergonomics in a moment. So uh, everything else though, cardboard cutting, is absolutely gonna do and all those heavy duty robust tasks that you want. And finally, I wanna hit this steel with you. On the light version, we're gonna get something different than what's on the premium, which is uh, S35VN. That's on the premium version uh, that we'll talk about competitive options and all that in here in a little bit. Uh, this version, the light, has AUS 10A steel. Now, that's a newer steel to market. It's been around, but more and more companies are beginning to use it. And I really like that steel. This is about the third or fourth knife that I've had it with. It performs super well. Um, and it definitely outperforms old budget-friendly offerings like 8CR uh, 13MOV or um, AUS 8 steel. This AUS 10 is more competitive with like 154 CM, VG10, Bowler N690 and 95 steels. So it's gonna be rust resistant, but it's gonna hold its edge much better than some of those budget steels. Well, for a monster blade, we got a monster pocket clip. Now it is tip up only ambidextrous, which is great because it's a fully ambidextrous blade. So you can absolutely swap that over. It is kind of nice, it's a singular pocket clip too. You know, I prefer that over the right or left pocket clip that Cold Steel does sometimes on their designs. I prefer a, a mono clip. Uh, three, you know, screw points, so that's really good. Nice giant lanyard hole, and then a good flush pocket clip as well. Stainless, you know, in design, so you're definitely gonna see it. Uh, and it's a high ride. I mean, that's about an inch sticking up out of your pocket. But for such a monster blade, you want more real estate out of the pocket than in sometimes almost. And that gives a really good pinch point to be able to pull out and use in heavier environments. All right, now how about the handle? With this style of lock, there may be you know some things to kind of consider here. Now, this thing is a monster at five and a quarter inches overall length. It's 0.59. Uh, so over half an inch thick stainless steel liners that have not been milled out. Now we obviously have some pass through, so that's good. But this guy comes in at 6.57 ounces. So, I mean, it's beefy in your pocket. You're going to know it's there. Uh, and it's on the heavier end of pocket knives that I like to carry. Now it carries rather well for the way it's designed and balance and all that. Um, and what we're looking at with my large size hands, just as you can see there, Boom, fits my hand really well. We got lots of real estate out the back with that nice little cut in. There, big squared off pommel area. 
The scales are FRN, so a polymer with some good traction there. The diamond cutout of the tra of the handle scale gives you good traction, but it's not super abrasive and you know painful, so I like that. And then a slick, I believe it's stainless steel, uh, or it might be aluminum, this lock bar portion, like we talked about. So that texture, you know, is pretty smooth. So you won't get a lot of grip there. They put some beefy jimping, you know, on the front end, really blocky. So it's going to really grab and, you know, get you into place there. So in this grip, it feels good. You have this Ricasso that you can kind of, I can almost sneak in for a choil for, you know, some finer cutting. You got to be careful because it's not quite a full on choil. Something that I did notice that I'm not super happy about. It doesn't really cause a problem, but we can see here that the backside of the blade is inside my finger cutout. I do not know why they either didn't mill that down further so that it was flush or just cut out the handle less so that it would cover up that portion. So it just feels not cheap, but just kind of under-designed in that area. And your finger will absolutely rub up against it. It is a sharp 90. I never really got any pain there. And when you're using it, you don't really feel it, but I know it's there. And since I know it's there, it's almost like you're psyching yourself out that there's this little bump that comes out that doesn't really hurt the ergonomics, but it sure doesn't help and doesn't help the overall flow of the design. But it is a really deep cutout, blocky jimping, you know, so in reverse grips, things like that. I mean, you are locked into place. Now, because the lock bar is thinner than the handle scale and we got this gap, there is this kind of gap feeling on the top end near your hand. So um, by no means is it like, causing hot spots, but there's just some gaps and unusualness that you're going to have to kind of get around and learn with the locking mechanism. That basic triad locking mechanism on, say, the Bush Ranger or the Voyager, you're just not going to have. There's none of these gaps. There's none of that, you know, space there. It's full and rounded and contoured the entire way. So to say that these are not more ergonomic than the Scorpion style lock would not be true. These are definitely more ergonomic. You will notice a fuller feel in handles like this or the Bush Ranger that you're just not going to quite feel with uh, the AD15 Lite. Uh, again, not bad, but it is a difference that you need to get used to with this style of design. And that leads us directly into pricing. What is this bad boy going to run you? And what are some competitive options? Now, I paid $135 for it over at Blade HQ. I will have links over to not only Blade HQ, but GP Knives and Smoky Mountain Knife Works and Amazon. Um, they're readily available on all those sites. And uh, just, you know, you can kind of pick your poison. But if this knife or the competitive options are connecting with you, I do appreciate it. Uh, if Today's the day that you're like, you know what, I'm ready to pick up one of these tools that you use those hyperlinks that we offer to you in the description box below. Much appreciated. Now, at $135, what's super crazy is I have seen them on Amazon, the old version or the original version, an S35VN for about the same price. So um, if you like the design, but you maybe want a huge upgrade in steel, they are somewhat, the, the prices on the s 35 v um, end version fluctuate all over the place, but you can get them sometimes for almost the exact same price. Currently, that may change down the line. Uh, for just steel performance and kind of similarity, the Cold Steel Voyager in um, AUS 10A steel as well, going to run you about $60 on average, so less than half the price. Now, obviously, not all the cool features and unique locking mechanism, and it won't be quite as thick and robust a blade, but uh, that is something to consider. Uh, you know, the Voyager is one of the most epic folders, in my opinion, of all time, uh, and I love it, and, and that steel is a great performer. And at $60, if you're just looking for a good pocket knife, maybe that's the better choice. And at about $135, you can easily get the Bush Ranger, same, you know, blade length, but S35VN steel. You're going to get a more ergonomic handle, but it is going to be that basic um, triad locking mechanism. And that's going to be about, you know, 135 bucks. So you're definitely paying more so for a very thick, robust blade and for the unique locking mechanism, which maybe for a lot of you is exactly what you're into and looking for. But just to keep that in consideration that you can either get way more premium steel that will hold its edge better on, uh, say, a Bush Ranger. Uh, or for about the same price, or you can cut the price in half and go with a Voyager for the same type of steel. And it really comes down to locking mechanism and style preferences with the AD15 Lite.
And there you have it, guys. That's really my conclusion on the tool overall. Is it a tank? Is it a beast? Is it very tough and reliable from everything I'm seeing? Absolutely. Is the locking mechanism very cool, unique, and does exactly what it's supposed to do? Absolutely. Uh, for the materials and the design, Cold Steel makes a lot else out there with either the same steel or better steel for either lower or the same price, depending on what you're looking for. So you really have to ask yourself, are you looking for uniqueness um, and just a cool thing, which a lot of people, if you're into knives, that's what we we're always looking for. That's why I wanted to pick this up. I'm like, dude, that's so unique and cool. I gotta try it out. So on a cool factor and a toughness factor, it is absolutely there. There are some drawbacks though, like we've talked about with some ergonomics a little bit and just other things that you need to be aware of in the overall design that either some of you may not mind at all the way you use tools or maybe something that makes you gravitate to something else that cold steel or other brands produce in general so that's me guys there's a way cool factor to the design there are some definite pros and a few cons to the ad 15 light and i want to hear from you guys what do you think about the locking mechanism what do you think about the design overall is it something that you pursue and like are always looking for is cool newness or you like the tried and true simple say lock back like a triad locking mechanism i look forward to hearing your guys thoughts i invite you guys also to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber and check out the other video popping up we're throwing up content like this all the time we just appreciate you guys so much for your viewership your regular support everything that you do here at the channel the family that we have here at gideon's tactical you knife lovers and outdoor adventures and gear connoisseurs you are such a blessing and i'm just thankful to uh have each other have us under each other's lives it's it's awesome and uh i love it so you guys are amazing. Till next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.